Welcome back, scholars. Again, we are continuing our study of T.S. Eliot, and today, today we are reaching our Mount Everest. This is the brilliant, epic-length poem, The Wasteland, by T.S. Eliot. It was one of the most, uh, one, deemed one of the greatest poems in the English language. There are seven different languages in the work, Latin, Greek, Italian, German, um, Sanskrit, French, English. There are 30 works of literature that he references, that he alludes to, including Conrad's Heart of Darkness. Um, Brando quotes Eliot in the end of, the Apoc of Apocalypse Now, uh, which was based on Joseph Conrad's Heart of Darkness, so it's a sort of circular callback to Eliot here. He quotes references from Greek mythology, from... Shakespeare's The Tempest, Tristan and His Old, and so on. This is a poem inspired by his fear and anger over the world falling apart after World War I. He published very little, but his works are um, uh, works excellence has been recognized since the publication of The Wasteland in 1922. He's claimed by both American and English literature. He was born in America, raised in America, but something of an Anglophile. Went a moving to moving to England. Um, and became a citizen of England in 1927. Eliot is a polymath. He wanted to read Dante's Inferno in the original Italian, so he learned Italian. Uh, he wanted to read the Upanishad, so he learned Sanskrit. He attended Harvard, where he learned, earned his Master of Arts, studied philosophy at the University of Paris, and at Harvard again. He loved language. He was troubled by the dumbing down of the American intellectual thought. Uh, he married the daughter of a British artist. Her name was Vivian. She was plagued by some hormonal issues so severe that she was eventually committed. The film Tom and Viv with Willem Dafoe uh, depicts their stormy life together. Once reaching menopause, now uh, Vivian was fine, but Elliot left her in the asylum and never went back to collect her, unfortunately. Okay, so uh, the poem is actually too long to um to discuss in length or to read to you in length i'm going to hit some of the major um major aspects of it here including the fact that it was originally titled he do the F police in different voices yeah uh thankfully the his fellow poet and his editor ezra pound got a hold of the poem and worked on it, edited it for him, cut it down to the length that it is now. In book form, the poem the poem came out in book form. It consisted of the poem plus several pages explaining all of the literary references, a kind of Rosetta Stone to the wasteland, as it were. So, complex piece. If you bounced off of this hard, don't feel bad. You completely understand. Uh, you're meant to. It's it's meant to really make you work. Um, now, he do the police in different voices comes from a Dickens novel, Our Mutual Friend, in which the character named Sloppy reads out the court case in different voices, and he tells us that there'll be various, which tells us there'll be various voices involved in the poem. This takes place after the Great War. The epigraph is that of. There we go. Uh, uh, the story of Sybil from Greek mythology. She uh, asked Apollo for eternal life, didn't think to ask him for eternal youth, so she gets older and older. When the boys come to visit, they ask her, what do you want, what do you desire? She says, I want to die. Uh, let's see. Here where it says, Il Miglior Fabro, to Ezra Pound, Il Miglior Fabro, that means... Uh, to Ezra Pound, the better craftsman. Now he starts off saying, April is the cruelest month. This is not because taxes come due then. Although, yeah, anyway. Um, April is the cruelest month. Spring makes us remember. Okay. Uh, the Maria he mentions, by the way, is an actual person. Uh, April is the cruelest month because that is when, uh, in you know, historically speaking, in primitive cultures, what we would do, we would make human sacrifices. There was a, uh, a tradition of sacrificing um, a child or a young man and burying him in the earth to ensure a, a better harvest. Echoes of this can be found in Shirley Jackson's The Lottery. Okay. Um, 
let's see, the body he mentions is the tradition of burying a corpse or perhaps burying a live person to ensure a good harvest here. You know, he says, um, he says, uh, mm, when he asked him about that, that corpse you buried or that body you buried there. Okay. Uh, movement two. We get to a game of chess here. Uh, I'm skipping around. Madame Sesostris, the famous clairvoyant. This was a an actual person. She was a, a uh, fortune teller. Known as the white is this woman in Europe with a wicked pack of cards. It is uh, the card of the drowned Phoenician sailor whose pearl, who pearls. Uh, those are pearls where his eyes look. And there's Belladonna, the lady of the rocks, the lady of situations. Here's the one, man with three staves, the wheel, the one-eyed merchant in this card, which is blank, something he carries on his back, which I'm forbidden. I do not find the hangman, feared death by water. I see crowd of people walking around in a ring. Thank you. I see Mrs. I, if you see dear Mrs. Equitone, tell her I bring the horoscope myself. One must be so careful these days. Okay. Um, the cards he mentioned, some of them are his own creations, some of them, some of them not. Uh, the Hanged Man, Death by, well, Death by Water is a reference to Shakespeare's Tempest. Unreal City, under the brown fog of winter dawn, a crowd flowed by London Bridge, so many I had not thought, not thought death had undone so many. Sighs and uh, shortened and frequent and ha exhaled. And each man fixed his eyes on his feet and flowed down with King William Street. Okay. And where it skips down here. Um, you were with me in those ships at Mylay, that corpse you planted last year in your garden. Has it begun to sprout? Will it bloom this year? Oh, has the sudden frost disturbed its bed? Oh, keep the dog far hence. That's a friend to men. Oh, with his nails he'll dig it up again. You hypocrite lecturer. Mon simable, mon frere. Okay. He's walking and walking down by the by the Thames River, and he sees someone that he knew, someone who had died in the war. Stetson here, right? Um, and he says, uh, then he refers back to Greek mythology. You were with me at the uh, the ships at Mylae, and the corpse here. This is the reference to the corpse of burying a corpse to ensure a good harvest. Okay, movement two, a game of chess. This is based on a conversation between he and Vivian. Uh, taken from a play where a young girl is seduced, the, the story is taken from a young girl, or a play where a young girl is seduced while her mother plays chess in the next room. Now, Philomel, Philomel he, uh, refers to is a woman in Greek mythology who was raped by King Tyreus, uh, Tyreus, who cut out her tongue. Philomela was the sister of his wife, Procne. Now, Procne, in revenge, killed his son and served him to him for a meal. Uh, the gods, to, say, uh, to save them, turned them into birds. Philomel was turned into a, might and, a nightingale and Procne into a swallow. Here. The one who speaks is very likely Vivian here in the, in the conversation. Um, and she says, My nerves are bad tonight. Yes, bad. Stay with me. Speak with me. Why don't you ever speak? Speak. What are you thinking of? What thinking? What? I never, th I never know what you're thinking. Think. I think we are rats. I think we are in Rats Alley, where the dead men lost their bones. What's that noise? The wind under the door. What is this noise now? What is the wind doing? Nothing. Again, nothing. Do you know nothing? Do you see nothing? Do you remember nothing? I remember those are pearls that were his eyes. Are you alive or not? Is there nothing in your head? Okay, and now this line there, those are pearls where were his eyes. He's referring to Shakespeare's The Tempest again. Um, when um, Ariel tells the, the survivor of the shipwreck, that father lies, lies five fathoms deep. He has become, you know, he is in the, uh, the subject of sea change. And now when Vivian read this, too, was, she, uh, she scrawled in her notes on the, uh, in the margin, Wonderful. And he says, but oh, 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 that Shakespearean rag, so elegant, so intelligent. What shall I, what shall I do now? What shall I do? I shall rush out as I am and walk the street with my hair down and so on, down so. What will we do tomorrow? What shall we ever do? The hot water at ten, and it rains a closed car at four, and we shall play a game of chess, pressing lidless eyes and waiting for a knock upon the door. Okay. And this is this this is their sad and rather pointless existence. This is all we do. Right? Yes. 
this is a this is not a happy couple, and they're in they're troubled. She, she's in, and okay. So then we move to two women conversing here. Um, when Lil's husband got demobbed, I said, I didn't mince my words. I said to her myself, "Hurry up, please. It's time." Now Albert's coming back, and you you make yourself a bit smart. He'll want to know what you've done with the money you gave you to get you some teeth. He did. I was there. You have them all out, Lil, and get a nice set. He said, I swear I can't bear to look at you, and no more I can't. I said, think of poor Albert. He's been in the Army four years, and he wants a good time, and if you don't give it to him, there's others that will, I said. Oh, oh, is there, she said. Something, oh, oh, something of that, I said. And then I'll know who to thank, and she gave me a straight look. Hurry up, please, it's time. Now, this is two women having a conversation in a pub. And the all caps here when it says, hurry up, it's time, that's the bartender going for calling for last call. Now, what happens here is uh, the uh, Lil, uh, her husband has just gotten out of the army. He's demobbed. He means, you know, discharged, essentially. And he's coming back, and she says, you know, you really ought to, he's going to wonder what you did with the money to give you to buy yourself some dentures. You got a nice set. Why don't you put them in? He goes, if he doesn't get a good time from you, he'll get it from someone else. She's essentially saying, hey, you know, if you, if you come, he comes home and you're not looking attractive, he'll go sleep with someone else. And she's to the point where she just goes, well, then I'll know who to know who to thank. And the problem is here is, um, she has, uh, had several children already and she was gone to the chemist to give to get something to it's essentially a morning after pill the equivalent thereof something to give her to cause her to abort the fetus and it's caused her to lose her teeth right? yeah so well she says um well if albert won't leave you alone there it is i said what you get married for if you don't want children hurry up please it's time well that sunday albert was home and he, and they got a hot gammon, and they asked me up into dinner to get me a beauty of it, to, to get the beauty of it hot. Hurry up, please. It's time. Hurry up, please. It's time. Good night, Bill. Good night, Lou. Good night, May. Good night. Ta-ta. Good night. Good night. Good night, ladies. Good night, sweet ladies. Good night and good night. And that is Ophelia's last words before she committed suicide. Some suggest she killed herself in the in the play Hamlet because she was pregnant with Ham with um, Hamlet's child. See, after World War, after the First World War, sexual inhibitions began to decline. More people were hooking up, but we were enjoying it less. It became something we just sort of went through, you know, a process rather than a passion.